question. Uh, I knew exactly what was going down. I knew Good we evening, everybody. To Welcome to Bible study. Uh, we're, I'm excited to let, about the conversation in the room, but I just wanted to bring our friends into the conversation in the room. Right? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I love friends. It's a beautiful thing. I'm really glad that they're all here with us tonight. Welcome, friends. Uh, oh, I got a notification. It probably did. <laughs> it is. It's starting. So, down. praise the Lord. Um, welcome everybody. Let's uh, tonight. Okay, so this is what this is. After much prayer and a total and utter, uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to do what Dathan tells me to do ever. That's just not going to happen. Good call. Um, so. After that, uh, no, really, it was just prayer. And after everything that's been going on these last few weeks, uh, and I'm not trying to stir up any trouble, okay? So don't comment on this, okay? But we have recently had multiple, multiple prophetic voices that have spoken about a specific thing that they, that they believe God was telling them was going to happen. And it doesn't seem to have happened. And, you know, so... So we've had quite a few of them come back and say, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the Lord on this. And so I have had a bunch of folks ask me about prophetic, the prophetic gift and spiritual gifts in general. So I decided it might be time, and I felt like the Holy Spirit was in this, to do uh, an in-depth study on what the Bible has to say about spiritual gifts. And so that, we are going to start that tonight. And we're going to be doing, for the first time, we're going to be interweaving Sunday morning and Wednesday night. Okay, so Sunday morning is going to be our 30,000 foot view. Okay, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be our, our, our overview of spiritual gifts. And we're going to do probably three weeks on Sundays about spiritual gifts. And it's going to be like not super detailed. I'm already having a not cool. Anyway, so Sunday mornings, are we're going to do this big overview, right? And we're going to, uh, and, then, and then the Wednesday night classes, which will probably go on a lot longer. Uh, we will be studying verse by verse um, what the Bible, and I did it again, this stupid thing. I, I, seriously, though, I can't. It really makes me mad. I, I, I have no idea. Check your band, bud. Yeah, yeah, that, that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> unless, I mean, you may be on, unless you're actually on the, we may have to move this study in there, is what we may have to do. Um, in fact, so, I'm sorry guys, I know you keep getting kicked off, I'm working on it, I really am. We may have to change rooms, because it might be the room. But, so Sunday mornings, the plan is to do the overview, and then Wednesday nights, we're going to go verse by verse, just like we always do. That's what this Bible study is for. We are going to go verse by verse, and we're going to go through the four... There it is again. we got to go. All right. We're going to try this from in here. I think it might work better, although it's going to be echoey. Like I'll probably need... I can go wherever you want, guys. So. I'm I'm mobile. <laughs> I'm 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 quite mobile. I'll back up a wee bit. <laughs> there. Okay, so like I said, <laughs> well, if we're gonna do this, I'm gonna have to use a microphone. I'm not sure what I don't have with me from now on. But anyway, it doesn't matter. They can hear us. Hi guys, welcome back. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so. Sunday mornings are the overview. We're going to go verse by verse through the, really there's, there's four passages in the New Testament that talk very specifically about spiritual gifts, okay? And we're going to start with the longest one because it's 1 Corinthians chapters 12 all the way through 14 are all about spiritual gifts. That is Paul's biggest section of scripture around this issue is 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. And so we, that is where we're going to begin. And I will read. Oh, 
Okay. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. This is the New American Standard. Is it really? <laughs> I don't know. I will say something to you about the NIV, however. Yeah. And the NIV is a perfectly good translation, except okay, that the NIV is rather biased against Pentecostal readings of Scripture. Wow. And they tend to take, they but tend to take. The NIV tends to take portions of scripture that could be read different ways and kind of purposefully turn it in a non-Pentecostal direction. I always read the message, but it's so whacked when you try to like yes. compare it to other... The message is great for, let's sit with Jesus and read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's not great for study. Because it's a paraphrase. So nice I love it. I read it almost every day. I, I seriously do, especially the Psalms. Yeah, that's right. I read it almost every day. Um, I adore it, but it's not great for uh, for study. And it's doing it in here too. This stupid piece of junk. We're here now. So bad. Lord Jesus, I just cast the demons out of this thing in Jesus' name. Okay. I don't know. I don't understand what the problem is at all. I really don't. It shouldn't be an issue. Um, okay, so let's read. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to the mute idols, however you were led. Therefore I am made known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus is accursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Verse 4, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of ministries in the same Lord, and there are varieties of effects, but the same God, who works all things in all persons, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, and to another by another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one spirit and to another the effecting of miracles and to another prophecy and to another to the distinguishing of spirits and to another various kinds of tongues and to another the interpretation of tongues but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually just as he wills okay so that is that's probably i'm hoping we'll get to we'll get to the end of that tonight to, to the end of verse 11. All right, so going back to verse 1, he says, All right, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. Uh, the word here, the word gifts, is inserted. Yeah. It's not in the original. Uh, it is put in there because uh, later on he uses the word gifts. And so they're assuming that that's what he means. But we're probably safer to just say concerning spiritual matters, concerning the spiritual, okay? Especially because he immediately goes into paganism, talking about paganism. And so Paul has obviously got a bigger things on his mind than just talking about spiritual gifts. But he do, and he does zero in on spiritual gifts later, but, but that's not where he begins. So he says concerning spiritual stuff, <clears throat> concerning the spiritual, uh, I do not want you to be unaware. So he's telling us, you, we are spiritual beings. We exist, not just in this physical realm. We exist as spirit and flesh. And he doesn't want us living unaware of the reality of our spiritual nature and our spiritual selves. He's saying you are going to encounter and and experience spiritual things, and I don't want you to be uh, ignorant or unaware of how those things, uh, you know, influence your life. And so he begins to talk about that stuff. 
here in these here in these chapters. And he immediately goes to, you know that you, when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. So in other words, he's pointing at your spirituality before Christ led you to these pieces of wood and iron and gold and whatever that couldn't help you at all. They were, he calls them mute idols, which he's quoting one of the Psalms when it talks about an idol cannot speak, an idol cannot see, an idol cannot help you. An idol may have eyes, but it can't see. It may have a mouth, but it can't speak. It doesn't, may have a, a head, but it doesn't, cannot comprehend. That's directly out of the Psalms. And that's why he calls them mute idols. Um, there's another passage, which we're not going to study in this, but where he says, the idols are nothing, but there are spiritual forces behind those idols. And so we need to be aware of that. Uh, that's in the book of Corinthians, but we're not going to get, that's not a part of our conversation tonight. Uh, yeah, I know. We're not going to go there. Um, but he says, but you were led. You were led by your spirituality to these things that aren't, that were unhelpful, that weren't good, that weren't, uh, that, that, that had no power. They were mute. They couldn't speak. They couldn't do anything. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. All right. Now, can a demon-possessed person say the words, Jesus is Lord? I get that question all the time. Huh. Yeah, of course they can. Why sure they can. They? Of course they would. Absolutely they can. Yeah, they can say those words. But can they mean them? No, no, they can't. But see, I've had people like, so you know, so you have to mean, to, it's the meaning behind it. Anyone can say it. Yes, just exactly. Mean. Yeah, and can a Christian say the words "Jesus is accursed"? I just did. Okay, of course we can say those words, mm -hmm. but can we mean that and feel that and live my life according to that? No. So if I'm living my life in a way that shows that I that I curse Jesus then I am not being led by the Spirit of God. But if I live my life in a way that says Jesus is Lord, that my whole life speaks Jesus is my Lord, then I am living by the Spirit of God. And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. And I've had people like, you know, because I've been in situations where we're trying to cast demons out of people or whatever, and I've had people that have read this verse and said, well, just ask them to say Jesus is Lord, and then you'll know if they're possessed or not. And I'm going, oh, come on. Guys, this isn't, this isn't, you know, Harry Potter where you say special words and things float around. That is not how this works. The devil is, he's really smart tricky, tricky. and he's really tricky and he would be able to, and besides, we know it's not true also because Jesus told us that in the la at the end of time, many will come to me, he said, saying, Lord, Lord. He's in these exact words. Lord, Lord, they're coming to Jesus. Lord, Lord, they say. And he's going to look them in the eyes and say, why do you call me Lord? I don't know you. I don't know who you are. And so that's that, that like test for demon possession. It doesn't work, folks. It doesn't work. Stop trying it. It doesn't work. Holy water is not a thing, bro. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, let's just, let's, let's forget everything you ever learned in the movies. Okay. Well, maybe about some things, but not about this. Um, that movie where the devil walks in, and he dips his finger in the holy water, and he just like goes like this. What was that? No, it was with. Uh, Is that with Al Pacino? With Al Pacino. Yes. What was it called? The Devil's Advocate. Devil's Advocate. Yeah. Isn't that Al Pacino and Tom Cruise? No, it's, it's Keanu Reeves. It's not Keanu. Yeah. But is there a real difference between Keanu and Tom Cruise? I mean, that's. Please. Yeah, one so can act, the other can uh, No, I don't think either one can really act, honestly. Um, but uh, I'm sorry. Don't don't say bad things about me on Facebook because I don't believe in the acting skills of Keanu Reeves or Tom Cruise. Um, uh, all right. Anyway. Um, Spiritual people should, are all about Jesus and his rulership in their lives and in the earth. That's the point. And that's the point of, our, of Christian spirituality is about the rulership of Jesus. That's it. We are here to be 
we, we are a part of his kingdom and he is our king. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're saying Jesus is Lord. Now, there is something you need to know, and that is that the folks in this day and age that were saying Jesus is Lord were making a very political statement because you were required to say Caesar is Lord. That was, that was the test of loyalty for the Roman Empire. So for a, a Roman person to say Jesus is Lord was quite, that was a big deal. Much bigger than it is for us. And so putting this in here, it means a whole lot more. And it may be, and I don't know this for sure, but it may be that Jesus is a curse is what they would ask you to say if you were renouncing Christ. I don't know. But I, I, I but that, but I'm just saying, Jesus is Lord meant a lot more. And he's saying, you have to have the Holy Spirit to be able to live your life in such a way that Jesus is Lord is a true confession of yours. True confession, meaning deep down men and felt. Yes, otherwise. absolutely. Anybody can that. say it, they're words. Anybody can say the words. Yeah. But can it be a true confession of yours? That's a whole nother question. And that's what he's trying to say. And he's pointing at, because now we're going to go verse 4, we're going to start zooming into the spiritual gifts portion of this conversation. And he is saying, if any of the spiritual gifts are being used in such a way that, that they're not pointing to the lordship of Jesus, then they're, not, they're being abused. Right. Okay? Any, if any of the spiritual gifts are being used in such a way that Jesus is accursed sounds more like what you were saying with your spiritual gift than Jesus is Lord, then we have abused that spiritual gift. We have caused, we have done bad things. Can you use that spiritual gift if you're using it that way, though? Is that spiritual yeah. gift going to come across? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, but but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. I promise we'll get here in a few, in, in a few minutes. Or not even a few minutes, because we're not going to get there tonight. Not really, probably. Um, but I promise you, we will get there in the study. Especially if we have a platform that's speaking. Man, I keep getting here in a few in, in a few minutes, or not even a few minutes, because we're not going to get there tonight. Not really, probably. Um, but I promise you, we will get there in the study. Especially if we have a platform that's speaking. Man, I keep getting. Please just, just, well, just. For you, I know, just but. A, is, is that an iPad or do you have? This is, I use this every Sunday. Yeah. And this never happens. Yeah. No, this is really the only thing we can use. And I don't know what's going on and it's driving me insane. Like but I, was, no... I know, I don't know. Every Sunday we use this and this does not happen. So I don't know what's happening. In Jesus' name, maintain the connection. Okay. Can I have the spiritual gift of, of <laughs> the spiritual gift of Wi-Fi? Lord Jesus, bless our Wi-Fi. I don't know what the problem is, honestly. Um, but okay, so now, verse four. So uh, let's see. Did I say all of that stuff? Okay, it's not. Oh, there's the other. Here's the other thing. It is not always easy to tell if someone is saying Jesus is Lord or Jesus is accursed. It is, it's just not. It's not always easy to tell. Um, and Jesus said that we would know them by their fruit. Okay? And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. Okay? So, we will know them by their fruit. So, even if they have gifts, like crazy, but no fruit... Even if they have gifts of the Spirit coming out their ears, mm -hmm. but they have no joy, no peace, no patience, no kindness, no goodness, no gentleness, no self-control, none of that stuff, if they don't have that stuff, then they are not saying Jesus is Lord, and they are not the kinds of people we want to hang out with. That's a sparkly, it's a sparkly jacket. So we got to recognize, okay, fruit more important than gifts. Right. You with That's me? Too, because normally you don't show the fruit until way after right. the, you know, the gift. For, but if we're going to be pursuing one or the other, 
And if we're going to be praying for one or the other, if we're going to long for one or the other, better be fruit. Fruit better than gifts. And the reality is if we're pursuing the fruit, the gifts are going to just come. But the fruit is what we want more. Because fruit, and we're going to get there in a second, but because fruit is, I mean, because gifts are the manifestation of the Spirit's presence in a person's life. That's what they are. That's all they are. It just means the Holy Spirit's there, yeah. which is great news. Doesn't mean, oh, I'm going to hit myself. Okay, so verse 4. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of ministries, and the same Lord, and there are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. Okay? So the Apostle Paul is going, Here, here's the deal, y'all. When the Holy Ghost is in the midst of people, a whole bunch of different things are going to happen. A whole bunch. And it's going to look different all, every time because each of you is different. Okay? There's all kinds of gifts, all kinds of ministries, all kinds of... The point is, it's the same Spirit. And if we're saying Jesus is Lord, and our lives are saying Jesus is Lord, and the Spirit is dwelling within us, there's a whole lot of things that are going to come flowing out of that kind of life. But it's the same Holy Spirit. And that's the point. That's the important part, okay? There will be lots of ways the Spirit will work because there are lots of people, and each one of us will manifest His presence in our lives in different ways. Just based on who we are. It's beautiful, isn't it? I love it. You can ask for things too. Like if you don't necessarily have this gift or whatever, you say, hey. Absolutely. (laughs) For sure. Well, and the Apostle Paul tells us we should seek to prophesy. But that's chapter 14. We'll get there later. Okay? So, no, it's all right. It's all these teeth. I'm just saying, (laughs) we got three chapters to go over in this section. And they're dense. There's a lot of stuff here. So hang on to your hats, okay? So. Some, uh, and he names off three kinds of things that are kind of interesting to me. I think, I think it's interesting because he kind of lays out these categories. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he says, uh, so he says there are varieties of gifts, varieties of ministries, varieties of effects. Okay. Now, don't ask me what belongs in what category. Mm-hmm. And maybe the Apostle Paul lays them out like in, in whatever. So but sure yeah when the spirit is present in the life of the follower of jesus gifts are going to come <laughs> ministries are going to happen and there'll be different effects that take place but it's the same holy spirit and he's present folks okay it's the same holy ghost there he is. He's in all of us. Okay, so, all right. So, some are gifts. This word in the Greek is charisma. Charisma. Yeah, that's the name. That's the word. The, the word is charisma, which means free gift. And the word, the word is derived from the word charis, which is the word we usually translate as grace. Okay? And that's important because... Now we understand where the gifts are coming from. Because the gifts come from God. <laughs> They're gifts of grace. Okay? So it's important to recognize the gifts of the Spirit are not earned. Yeah, they're gifts. These are gifts. These are gifts that Jesus just gives because he's generous. Way better than Santa Claus. He doesn't give out coal. He just gives out beautiful stuff. He is generous. And he loves to give gifts to his kids. They're not earned. They're not gifts. And operating in the supernatural is not a sign of holiness or importance. Okay? So just because you prayed for somebody and they got healed does not mean that Jesus is okay with your porn addiction. Yeah. Right. All right? Are you with me right now? Mm -hmm. Just because you prayed for somebody (laughs) and and, and they felt... Maybe something else, but not. I'm just saying, (laughs) just because... Just because there's a guy that can show up on the TV screen and be like, put your hands on my hand on the screen and you got healed does not mean they're not stealing money. Yeah. Because that didn't come from 
come from the guy. No. They came from God. Exactly. And it, these are gifts. They're free. They're not earned. And so God give gift, gives gifts through very broken people all the time. So I have a question for you. Yeah. Can he take them away? Well, let's, let's pause that for okay. a second. Because that question tells me that you don't quite understand the nature of how this stuff works. Okay. Okay? okay. Um, is it wrong? What? what? To start your day like that. What do you mean? No. Okay. No. Right. What, watching the TV and, okay. and, and praying with some guy on the... Uh, no, absolutely not. I just going to ask. I used to... Do you know, I used to watch Benny Hinn every morning before school. Totally. Oh, I did every day. I would get up and I'd be getting ready and there's Benny Hinn knocking people over with his coat. Praise the Lord. I mean, I don't know what's going on. That crazy hairdo, whatever. I was feeling the Holy Ghost. So I was, I was getting charged up. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to lay hands on people. If I only had a pinky ring, the anointing would be on me. Right? Okay. I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, but. Talking about Prince who? Well, that's something else. You do you, boo, but yeah, that's something else. No, that's that's a whole other thing. <laughs> that is. Yeah, that's not our conversation for today. <laughs> we can have that conversation another time. Uh, so it is important to recognize that the gifts of the Spirit are not earned. They are gifts. And operating in the Spirit, supernatural, is not a sign of holiness or importance. So that, the what I want you to hear, okay, is this. Number one, just because you don't have all your stuff figured out does not mean God does not want to use you in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I've had a bunch of people tell me, well, I could never give a word from the Lord because I didn't do my devotions this morning. Or I could never, I'm not, a, I'm not, you know, I can't minister because fill in the blank. Whatever that might be. You know, they say they can't be used of God because of some silly thing that they have decided is more important than the grace of God at, like, or, or overrides the grace of God in their lives. And that's just not true. It's just not. Okay, God can use you. God can, God can flow his gifts through you no matter what stage of maturity you're in. Does that mean that a baby Christian should go and be in leadership at a church? No, 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 no. That's something else. But if we're talking about praying for somebody, if we're talking about going up and talk to somebody about Jesus, if we're talking about sharing something you felt like the Lord put on your heart, all of those things are gifts. And, you, you know, people that have been following Jesus for 10 seconds can hear the voice of God. So don't be worried about that. Okay, don't be worried about that. Um, and also, just because you see somebody that has gifts of the Holy Spirit flowing through them does not mean that they're okay and that they are better doing better with Jesus than you or whatever. They're, this is not a signifier of where their relationship with Jesus is. It's just God likes to give gifts to his kids. So what happens when somebody's off base? What do you mean? Like can they still, can God still flow through those people to touch, to no, touch people? I'm talking more like they have prophesied something and it is way whack. Like sure. it doesn't align with it. Yeah, that doesn't, okay. So we're we're going to talk a whole lot about the prophetic <laughs> gift in particular okay. when we get to chapter 14. And the difference between... I am so sad. That's probably like 18 times. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Okay, um, so when we get to chapter 14, we will go really in depth around the prophetic gift and the difference between the New Testament prophetic gift and the Old Testament prophetic gift because there is a big difference. Huge. Okay? And we need to understand that, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit the gift, of, the gift of prophecy in the New Testament, like where we're, the life we're living now, is very different than, the, than it was back then, okay? And it's important that we understand those differences. They have different, there's a different purpose, mm -hmm. right? Between those two gifts, totally different. Um, but like I said, we'll get there. So, but the same spirit, the same God is at work in us all, and that's the point, okay? 
this is God. Doesn't what it looks like? God likes to move through his kids. This is driving me insane. I don't know what's going on with the internet. I don't know how to fix it. I'm very upset. No, I'm, I mean, I went off, but I immediately turned it back on, and then and I don't understand. Why? Uh, she was. I don't know if she still is. Hey, guys. I'm sorry the internet's messed up today. I really don't know what's going on. All right. What time is it? 8.04. It says reception field, but I don't see. No. We were in the other room, and I was doing the same thing in there. Yeah. We were in there, and I thought maybe coming in here would help, but it hasn't helped. <sighs> okay. Where are we? Yes. Verse 7. Where are we at? Okay. Good. Verse 7. We're in verse 7. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Okay? I like that phrase, the manifestation of the Spirit. I like that phrase. Because that, that helps me in my English brain to get around the problems. It helps me and my English brain to get around the problems around the word gift. Because we have some problems around the word gift. Problems we need to figure out, okay? Okay, it is a manifest. I can't stand this. It's driving me crazy. Maybe I should turn this thing off and turn it back on and see if that fixes it. I don't know. The manifestation is a better phrase. These, these, these things, these charisma, mm -hmm. are manifestations. They're evidence of the Spirit's presence, the Holy Spirit's presence in a human life. That's what they are. Manifestation is a word for when something is not experienceable and then it becomes experienceable, okay? For instance, the manifestation of the problems with our Wi-Fi connection <laughs> is that I keep getting kicked off of Facebook. There isn't a new one, so this we're stuck with this. And I don't know what the issue is. Maybe at 6.30 at night, there's a whole lot of people around here using the internet, and That's that may slow us down. I don't know there. what yeah. the problem is, or maybe Facebook. I don't know yeah. what, I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know what the problem is. But, I, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to be putting a, an edited version of this without all the skips and jumps out on YouTube. So if you're tired of the skips and the jumps, you can just log off now and the whole thing will be loaded up later tonight on, on our YouTube channel. And cut me off right there. Good plan. So anyway, and then we won't have stuff like that happen, okay? So you may want to go out to the YouTube channel. And I may want to switch. Or you might something. just want to come in and have Bible study with us. Well, there's that. <laughs> Tell you what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep recording and we're not going to go live again. Okay. Yes. But I, again, I don't know if that's so. the problem. What do you mean? It says right here, it says the gifts of the Spirit are given for the common good. Right. So that means like the body. Yes. So that specific, so it's not meant for you necessarily, it's meant for everybody. Aren't you one of the common? I am, but I'm just wondering like, yeah. <laughs> and obviously it doesn't mean if it's not good for everyone in the room, then it's not going to happen. Because... Everyone in the room is not even a tiny portion of the body of Christ no. across the world. So, so that's, that, it can't mean that. It can't mean if it's not good for everybody, then we're not going to do it. No, no, it can't mean that. That, that wouldn't make any sense. So, but there's a difference between like having a word for everybody. Yes. And a specific word for like specific Huge person. difference. 
between a personal prophetic word yeah. and a prophetic word for the corporate body. And all of the all of the spiritual gifts, we need to operate in discernment as to who's this for. But that's because it too, right? we may it is. <laughs> we may be thinking um, this word is for everyone when it's just for us. And I've heard that happen a bunch. Like a bunch a bunch. Okay? I have heard, I have been in services, etc., where uh, somebody's given a word and I'm over here going, that's just for you, honey. That, that word is not for anybody else in this room. Okay. You know, and it just, it, it just, and, and sometimes that it's, it's like, you should have prayed on that a little longer. In a lot of churches, especially larger churches, there is a point person that anybody that wants to give a prophetic word has to go to them and kind of say, here's what I'm hearing. And then they get to make the decision of whether or not that gets shared with the, whole, the entire body. And it's usually still, okay, I'm gonna give you the microphone and you can share it, but it's like, there's a buffer. Um, we don't really have the ability to do that <laughs> here. Uh, well, I mean, because the only person, there's maybe two people I would trust to be the buffer and one of them's me. Uh, so, uh, just because it takes, it takes a lot of experience and prayer and training to really be able to discern when a word belongs to the whole body and when it's an individual word. And, and so, but I don't want anybody to be scared off at sharing their prophetic word because the, the smallness of this congregation means that it's safe for us to mess up a little bit, right? Because we all love you. So if you get up and say, I mean, I was actually, I, I heard about a, a lady in a service who got up and started prophesying and about 10 words in, she goes, oh shoot, I'm in the flesh. And she just sat back down. <laughs> Which I'm like, yay! <laughs> At least she knew it. Right? Thank you, right. Lord, for that. Uh, that's such a great example. I just thought that was you awesome. You were there? No. No, no, no. I, I wish I had been. I, I think my mom was there. Um, but I'm like, man, that would be so good. I would love that. Let's do more of that. Okay. So, but the gifts are meant to unite us. Oh, uh, hold on. I skipped one. God is in all of us, working through all of us, for all of us. We are the body, and he is the spirit that infuses the body with life. Okay, if you think about it that way, okay, we're the body of Christ and the Holy Spirit is the spirit that fills the body with life. Just like your spirit fills your body with life, the Holy Spirit is the spirit that fills the rest of the body with life. And these gifts are not for the person who is to release them. They are for the person that they're being released to. Or persons. So there is a difference in when you're hearing God speak to you and then what you're hearing. Yes, else. absolutely there's a difference. Yeah, and they might feel very much the same, yeah. which is why we need to be like, hmm, anytime I hear the Lord saying anything to me, I ask the question, is this for me or is this for like public consumption, right? Like, is this, Lord, is this for me or am I supposed to share this with someone? Is this for me or what, right? And, and it's important to ask that question. But then when the Lord says, it's for everyone, then you gotta be bold. Yeah. You stand up and say, okay. And the first time I ever gave a prophetic word in church, I was probably 60, okay? And, uh, and, and I was hit like a ton of bricks with this prophetic word. I had just been reading a book about, the, about prophetic ministry and the Lord had, I had felt like the Lord had told me that I was gonna be used in the prophetic gift. And so I, so I began praying about it. And then where I was there was a Sunday night service. And man, I got hit like, boom, this prophetic word just plowed me. And I'm just like, ah. Oh. And I, I was shaking, I was so nervous. And I got up in front of the whole congregation. I was like, Ooh, and I'm crying. I was like, I think Jesus is trying to say this. And the Holy Spirit did some really cool stuff from that. 
And my youth pastor came over afterwards and was like, hey, that's great. I'm proud of you. He goes, I knew it was the Lord because nobody would have gotten up looking like that. <laughs> right? He's exactly the kind of guy he was. He was like, Gee, thanks. Thanks, PT. I love you. Thank you. I just humiliated myself in front of all these people. Thanks. Uh, but he did say, yeah, that was, that was a word for everybody. And I had been practicing on my friends, like the Lord had been giving me words for individuals for a while. But then now we're in a service and you know that moment where everything kind of comes to a halt and it's obvious God is gonna say something, there's a prophetic word and it's like, where is it coming from? And, and, my, and my, uh, my wife's uncle was leading worship and I think he may have actually said, if there's a prophetic word, go ahead and give that now. And I was like, you know. <laughs> Here I am. But that gift, those gifts are not for us. They're for the people. God is giving that gift through us to someone else. So whenever we, we shouldn't use the language of like, my spiritual gift is. Because the gift isn't the ability to give a gift. Yeah. The gift is the gift. Yeah. Okay? And so sometimes we think about healing like, I have the gift of healing. No, you don't. Yeah. Unless Jesus just healed you, yeah. then you have a gift of healing. And that's actually how it's worded in the, in the book. Yeah. Gifts of healing. Mm -hmm. the, so when you get healed, you received a gift of healing from Jesus. Yeah. He healed you. Nothing to do with the guy praying for And me. the guy praying for you was just the conduit through which that gift was delivered. He was UPS, right? He was, he was FedEx. He just delivered the gift to your house. You're the one that received it. Okay? And that's how we have to, and so when people say, I have the gift of prophecy or I have the gift of healing, no, that's, you're, you're not, you're understanding it wrong, which is why I like the phrase manifestations of the spirit because then you can't claim that. I have the manifestation of prophecy. No, that doesn't sound right, does it? So you can't say my gift of the Spirit is. No, no, that's not, what, that's not how this works and that's not how we're supposed to understand it. Well, the way we should understand it is God has gifts for his kids and he wants to use his other kids to give them the gift. So it's like when you're a parent and you write down no. two, Ethan, even the ones that <laughs> exactly. You know, how many times has has one of my kids been like, "What did I get, Lily, this That's year?" Like right? Year. <laughs> They're like, "I was I was excited about this as you are. I have no idea what's in there. I know it's from me, but right." right? <laughs> uh, but that's what it, exactly and that's and that's how this works okay or when your kid plays santa and hands out the gifts he didn't buy those gifts he's just picking them up and handing them off and that's that's what this is so these are gifts from god to people in the church individually and god uses the body to minister to the body that's how it works and that's great right that's awesome and there's something else we need to understand is that you may be used multiple times in the same to deliver the same gift mm -hmm. okay you may be used multiple times to deliver a, a a word of prophecy you may be used multiple times to deliver a healing gift you may be used multiple times to deliver a, a tongue or an interpretation and yes we begin to get faith for that stuff we begin to get uh experience and comfort with op with you know handing out that particular kind of gift like we know how to do it right we get good at that and we get confidence for it and so god's going to come back to us over and over because that becomes part of your identity i'm the guy that gets to hand out this gift and that's totally fine that's totally fine but that doesn't mean that you're only allowed to be used in that gift and it doesn't mean that every time the Spirit shows up, you need, you will be used in that gift, okay? Every Pentecostal church has that one person that speaks yeah. in tongues every service. <laughs> it's true, it is, and that's their gift, and whatever, fine. But just because the Spirit's in the room doesn't mean you need to be giving a word in tongues. And it is, it is maturity to say, Lord, do you have something for me to bring today? And if you don't, fine. 
Maybe it's somebody else's turn. And that's great. Let's do that, right? Do that. Let's do that. Um, and there's no limit on how many gifts, how many different kinds of gifts you personally can be, can deliver. Because you're just delivering them, right? So today it might be healing, tomorrow it might be a prophecy, the next day it might be a word of wisdom, the next day it might be. As a pastor, what I have recognized is that whenever there's a gap, that's the one I get called on for, personally. So when there's good prophetic people in the room, but there's nobody to interpret tongues, guess what happens? Mm -hmm. I end up interpreting tongues all the time. <laughs> when, there's no, when there's people interpreting tongues, but there's nobody there to, to, to release a healing, then guess what happens? I end up over there. And I think, you know, that's, uh, that's fine. I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm available. I'm here. And that's all it takes. We just need to be available for the Spirit. Whatever you want to do, Holy Spirit, here I am. And, and he'll put us where he wants us. That's the whole idea. And this is Jehovah sneaky at work mm -hmm. once again. Why? Because when he doesn't give everybody all the gifts, but he spreads them out, mm -hmm. oh, now I have to rub shoulders with everybody mm -hmm. to get the stuff I need from God. Right? Mm -hmm. Now everybody gets to have a part in doing what God's doing. And everybody gets to have to receive from another part of the body. So this is God's way of drawing us together and unifying us because you know what? It meant something that day when you spoke that word over me. And it meant something that day when you came and you helped me put in a bathtub at my house or whatever it is, you know, that, which is one of the gifts. The gift of helps is a gift of the Holy Spirit. A TV in my trunk for you. Don't let me forget. Okay, I won't. <laughs> when you gave me that TV for the mother's room over there, that's what... It's a great gift, right? All right. So, all right. Now we're going to jump into this. We only have 10 minutes to go through the whole list. So we're probably going to have to say nope. We're probably just going to have to wait and do that next time because I don't think we have time to go through the whole list. Um, I will say this about the list that's coming up. Okay. Because verse 8 through 11 is one of the five different lists of gifts of the Holy Spirit. There are five lists and some of them overlap with each other. If you want to know what those lists are, if you want to write them down, I'll tell you. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 through 8. We're going to go and we're going to do in-depth study on each of these lists. Romans 12, 6 through 8. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, that's what we're about to read. 1 Corinthians 12, are you with me still? Am I going too fast? 28 through 30. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and following. And 1 Peter 4, verse 11. There's only two in that last list. Ephesians 4, 11. And probably 12 and 13 too, but I just have four of those. Like I said, these are the, these are the scriptures we're going to go after in this class. These five groups and kind of their surrounding whatever. The most important one is 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Because Paul goes into the most depth and he gives us great context. He helps us to understand the purpose of the gifts and gives us instruction about their use. Okay. Yeah, that's, so, I think, what throws me off of is the use of those gifts. Because once you receive the gift, if someone you know, asks for you to be ill, or you are, or whatever the gift you receive is, isn't that the use of the gift now? You know what I mean? Right. But well, what I mean that, by that is delivery. The okay. deliver, how, how does delivery work? That's how, yeah. What's an orderly way to deliver so, so the gifts? Direct, like if you said the use of the gift, then it's okay, I, I have the gift. Of right. I'm still use. stuck in that. The, in that old verbiage that that, that I think is totally wrong and that because oh, I'm using my gifts no you're not you're giving out gifts and there's a big difference but there like is a right category. way to give them out like discernment is a different category than like healing and all oh, absolutely. that stuff because discernment you can use in like all of the gifts and you need to use it in all of the gifts well wisdom you can use in all yeah, of the gifts wisdom, and, and all that yeah, stuff too sure. but then like 
the healing and the speaking words and yeah. doing stuff like that. It's a completely different category. So those, there are those five gifts, okay? And these gifts may be a one-time occurrence. Like you may be the delivery person for one of these gifts only once in your life. Mm -hmm. um, I have only seen maybe two dramatic healings. Like really like, oh my gosh, go up on the stage, Benny Hinn, he kind of healings mm -hmm. like, like, whoa. You know, I've seen people, you know, oh, my headache is gone. Thank you, Lord. Which is great, but I mean like dramatic. I've been to Benny Hinn and I haven't seen much. I have seen some really dramatic healings connected to the Benny Hinn ministry. Like, I, remember I don't have anything to say about Benny Hinn. I don't know anything about it, but so I'm just saying. My sister heal. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and at different times, it seems like, seems like there's moments in church history where almost everybody that gets prayed for gets healed. Like Elizabeth. And then there's moments in church history where mm -hmm. almost so nobody like, gets healed. Elizabeth, I love you, brother. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like there's just, she's healed. Yeah. There's just different times where there seems to be more of that happening. And I don't have an explanation for that other than there's more of that happening. I don't know. I'm not God. So you want to talk to him about it? Go right ahead, but I have no clue. I don't understand why there's in, it's just like when I was a kid, everybody was falling all over the floor all the time. Mm -hmm. That never happens anymore. I don't know what that's about. I, pff, I don't know. I remember watching it happen less and less. I think part of it was it got abused. And so the Lord was like, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. I remember laughing. Oh, yeah, the holy laughter thing. That was crazy. That happened all the time. I used to, you know, that was like my favorite thing in the world. Was, yeah. I just want to go get drunk in the spirit. And that was, that was the terminology we used, right. which is kind of crazy, but it was, you know. And man, I, I would. I would get totally com just, I didn't know where I was, you know, at times. But completely lost in the Holy Spirit. Okay? But the, these gifts are the manifestation uh, of the Spirit. Okay? Then Ephesians chapter 4, that list describes a set of five gifts that we usually call the office gifts or the five-fold ministries. Okay, and we'll talk more in depth about them, but those seem to be in a special category um, because that was the five-fold ministry of Jesus, apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, and teacher. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or shepherd, teacher. Yeah. I always think of the acronym APEST. Okay. Apist. It's the five fingers that make up the fist of Jesus. I always think of Apist. Okay, so, and he puts those kind of in a special category, and they have special, a special use. But one of those is prophet. Okay? But then there is also gifts of prophecy, right? And not everybody who prophesies belongs in the office of prophet right. and understanding the difference so we will talk about that a lot when we get to ephesians 4. no it's all right what's up well i always heard okay so there i always heard there's a difference between being a prophet and prophesying and having yes. a word of encouragement yeah or, sure you know what i mean like a right. word of encouragement could be for the entire you know mm -hmm. congregation or just for a specific and that i never really I didn't really think of that as prophesying or being right. a prophet. That was just like God's got a gift of encouragement. For well, you or a and encouragement. gifts of encouragement is one of the gifts in one of the lists. Yeah. So, that's so it's actually right? considered a completely separate okay. thing. Yeah, but again, when we start to like say, well, that's prophecy. That's not a gift of encouragement. We've kind of missed the point yeah. because it's not important. Yeah. What label you put on it, not important. Was it delivered in a Christ-like manner? Mm -hmm. Is it proclaiming that Jesus is Lord? Mm -hmm. These are the things we care about, mm -hmm. okay? Was it delivered in a loving way? Mm -hmm. And does it glorify Jesus as our Lord and Savior? Mm -hmm. Those two things, that's what we care about. We don't care what the label is. So people talk about prophetic dance or a prophetic, uh, like, you know, playing an instrument, prophesying on your instrument. King David taught his musicians how to prophesy on their instruments i have heard your dad prophesy on his instrument 
I don't know how many times. Truly, though, like yeah. for reals. Like, and I have seen crazy stuff happen when a Holy Ghost anointed person picks up an instrument and begins to play out of that place of the infilling of the Holy Spirit and ministry going out and like just doing incredible things. I have seen it happen with my own two eyes and it's happened to me where I've had somebody, uh, okay, oh, uh, do you guys remember Daryl Evans? Okay, he was a worship leader years ago. I'm trading my sorrows, okay? I'm trading my shame, okay? There was a song on his big album that blew up uh, called I Am In Love With You. And at the end of that song, Lincoln Brewster, who's another worship player, plays this electric guitar solo at the end of that song that to this day I cannot listen to it without just getting so just moved by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and I believe with all my heart that he was prophesying on his instrument and that that was caught in on the CD. I really do. And I have seen that kind of stuff happening so many times where God just uses some kind of crazy, who knows, I, I have had paintings. Oh, I love the paintings. Like a painting yeah, that yeah. was prophesied under the, that was painted under the inspiration yeah. of the Holy Spirit. And I'll like come around the corner and that painting just like, bam! And I'm just hit by the presence of God. And it's like, wow, wow, there's something going on, right? I have seen, you know, so many different ways. And, and I think when Paul starts talking about, there's many different gifts, there's many different ministries, there are many different effects. He's going, the Holy Ghost is going to get into anything you invite him into. So just invite him into everything and just watch what happens. <laughs> like, but then he starts listing examples, which is the list that we'll really dig into next time. He starts listing examples of, so sometimes this happens, sometimes that happens, sometimes this happens, sometimes that happens. These are just things you can probably expect when the Holy Spirit's in the room. But it's not meant to be exhaustive. Yeah, it doesn't mean that all the lists are in, all of the gifts are in that list. No, the Holy Spirit can do whatever he wants. You know, we've seen like the cloud appear in a room or we've seen gold dust. What the heck is that? I don't even know what the heck that is. We've, there's, you know, we've seen people that have oil drip off of their hands, okay? I don't know what this stuff is. It w I would say it belongs in the miracle category which is kind of the miscellaneous bin of spiritual gifts, by the way. So it's like, it's like, it's a miracle. I don't know. Just, it's supernatural and it's not healing. So it's a miracle. Um, but, but, but I don't know. And people have talked about, I mean, you, you name it, it's probably happened. Okay. I, you know, people have talked about like money that just showed up out of nowhere. And people have talked about food that has shown up out of nowhere. People have talked about crazy, crazy stuff. I heard a minister from uh, Cuba, their revival, people's teeth were growing back into their heads. I heard that, yeah, okay. I heard about that. Yeah, because they didn't have good dentistry in Cuba, mm -hmm. and so Jesus was like, well, I'm a better dentist than any of yours. And he just, <laughs> so people were walking out of revival meetings with full sets of teeth, and they walked in with a bunch missing. And that was just the way God was moving in that particular time. It's a gift of the Spirit. If it's delivered in love and if it's glorifying Jesus as Lord and bring it on that's where we need to be is this being delivered in love and is it glorifying Jesus as saved as as King Jesus is Lord do we walk away from it saying Jesus is Lord if we do then it's good so however somebody takes it is completely up to them after you discern how you're going to Right. Give the gift, now the the Absolutely, gift. Oh, there's going to be whole things where it doesn't matter how hard you try. Someone is not going to be able to receive, like Shana was just saying, I can't receive that. I can't that's, receive that. I, I, fine. I've got issues with that. That's okay. And I need a little girl, but you know, I just I can't. Do. I get physically ill when yeah. I hear stuff like that. Yeah. I, that doesn't mean it's not anointed. Yeah, I mean, totally it's not Jesus. agree because it never used to be that way. Right. It just happens. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for tonight.